Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of System Web Design. I'm here with Laurent Moll, the CTO of our Terrace. We're hearing a lot more about coherency, particularly when we start getting into multi-core and many core designs. What exactly is coherency? What's been the problem there, and how do we move it forward? So um, coherency in the, the kind of uh, uh, normal use that you've, that you've been hearing lately is really cache coherency. Um, there is kind of a generic um, um, notion of coherency, which is basically if you have multiple agents that are exchanging data with each other or data through memory, um, the question is how do they make sure that anytime they write data, that data is going to be visible to the other, uh, to, to the reader. Um, and that's kind of reasonably easy to do in a system. Uh, you can make sure that you push all your data to memory. Uh, uh, PCI has another type of, uh, of way of making sure that visibility happens, but in general it's fairly easy. Um, where it becomes really more complicated is when you're uh, adding caches to the system. Because in caches, any data that's, that's been written might be actually retained somewhere in the corner of the chip. Um, maybe, you know, if it's a CPU cache, it's going to be close to the CPU, and it's not going to be easily visible to the other agents. Um, and when you have multiple agents, each with its own cache uh, that are talking to each other, they have the problem of that data that typically they will write in their own cache, uh, make it visible to the, other, uh, to the other agents. And so that's where cache coherency uh, comes into play. Um, cache coherency has multiple aspects. Um, there is the uh, easiest aspect, which is software managed cache coherency, which is um, what you do uh, when you don't have hardware that actually deals with making sure things are coherent. And what software managed coherency means is every time the software knows that um, there is some communication that has to be done uh, between it, you know, the, the CPU, for instance, on which it's running, and some other CPU, uh, and it knows that there's a cache in the middle, so this, you know, that CPU that they're running on has a cache, which these days you know, every CPU has a cache. Um, they uh, want to make sure that whatever data needs to be transferred to the other agent, uh, maybe the other CPUs or, or whatever the other agents uh, are, uh, is actually visible uh, to, to these agents. Um, and conversely, if those other agents have to send data to that particular uh, uh, CPU that they're running on, they want to make sure that any copy they have in their cache is not stale, uh, that they actually see the latest copy that's been sent by, by that agent. And so with software coherency, uh, it's a case of software knowing that some data exchange has to occur and talking to its own cache to make sure that whatever old data it might have there um, uh, gets removed from the cache so that when it's reading or writing that piece of data that needs to be exchanged, uh, it will actually get either the latest copy or that whatever it's written in its cache has been pushed out in the system enough that the other person is going to be able to see it. And so that's, that's software managed coherency. Uh, it's much simpler on the, software, on the uh, hardware side, uh, but software has to do a lot of work. Um, and that means not only some complexity and room for, for, for error in the, uh, in the software, also means that um, there is some inefficiency because you know, typically that's in the uh, uh, context of a CPU. And CPUs are fairly power hungry machines and we like that they're power hungry when they're doing work, uh, but when they're just looking at their caches, pushing stuff out of the cache and into, into the cache, that's not actually you know, good use of, of, uh, of, of CPU cycles. And so that's where cache, you know, hardware cache coherency comes into play. Cache, cache coherency is not anything that's new, right? This has been around for years in one form or another? That's right. That's, that's been around for decades. Um, basically, since the invention of the cache, you know, the first CPU that had a cache had that problem of how do I make things that are in the cache visible to the outside world? And you know, first the CPU gets data from DRAM, uh, gets you know a lot of things from the network. Uh, maybe it has you know a camera or you know whatever you know um, um, in-out I/O device attached to it. So it's really important uh, that uh, that is very consistent with uh, with what's in the cache. So it's been you know it's been around for decades. Um, the, um, the, the, the most common thing is, has been that CPUs have had caches for a long time. And so they've had the problem of how do you, how do you uh, have multiple CPUs with multiple caches to talk to each other. And multi-CPUs, they're, you know, they're all the rage today, but really they've also been existing for decades in larger systems. Um, and so it is not a new problem. You know, Hardware-based coherency, which is having a hardware mechanism uh, that uh, links the caches together so that when uh, one, uh, let's say, CPU uh, needs to get access to a particular data, 
it somehow makes sure that that particular piece of data is the latest um, um, and that when it writes uh, some data, it will be visible to all of the other CPUs, even though they're kind of remote and they have their own caches. Uh, that's what hardware coherency is, and that's also been around for, for decades. So one of the things that changes now is that you have, instead of just one vendor doing all this stuff, you have multiple vendors that are starting to contribute the cores and the, the various parts on an SOC, right? What? That's right. So um, the, 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 the first step uh, for, for hardware coherency, and that's the one that's, that's been existing for, for a long time, is CPU to CPU coherency. Um, and so, for instance, if you have a quad core uh, CPU these days, you know, you'll have quad core CPUs with a cache, and somewhere buried in there, which you don't see, there is some cache coherency going on already. Um, the, the next step actually is, um, especially now where you have multiple CPUs, uh, multiple clusters of, of multiple CPUs, you have that second level of, of cache coherency that needs to happen. And now instead of being tightly integrated with the CPU, they're kind of more general protocols. Um, and so it's, it's a little further, it's a little different, it's more standard if you want, it's less kind of in-house. Um, you know, multiple CPUs, and you might have multiple types of CPUs uh, that are talking to each other. Uh, a good example lately is uh, the ARM Big Little, where they actually have two different members of a family that have been designed by two entirely different sets of people, um, and they actually have to talk to each other. Uh, and so um, to do this, you have to have a special fabric that has kind of standard ports that connect to, to these different CPUs uh, and uh, that, that does the hardware coherency. Um, another aspect of, of hardware cache coherency is I.O. coherency, where any I.O. device that does not own a cache, uh, but that wants to make sure that any data that exchanges with the CPU is, is consistent, or coherent with, with what's in the CPU cache, uh, uh, needs to um, um, uh, happen, um, may be able to connect into the CPU cache coherency mechanism through a normal protocol that has kind of nothing to do with cache coherency. And then the CPU itself that owns the cache will do all the right things to, uh, uh, to make that, that coherency happen. This has never been tried before, right? Well, so IO coherency and, and multiple types of, of CPU coherency is in existence right now. The thing that, that has never been really tried before is um, having uh, the, the next step, kind of the frontier, if you want, uh, which is having different types of things, entirely different types of things talk to each other. Uh, a good example is CPUs talking to GPUs. You know, GPUs have big caches, CPUs have big caches, and we're going into a realm where you know, the GPUs are used more and more for general computation. So instead of having very large amounts of data that, that they process internally with just a little bit of output to the display and, and not a lot of communication with the CPU, they actually exchange a lot of data very quickly with the CPU, and so there's a need for, um, uh, for CPU to GPU communication. Um, and, and the need for, because they have large caches, for hardware-based cache coherency between the two. Um, and um, what we'll see is that you know, in, in the coming years, um, this will probably gradually happen, uh, and it'll first gradually happen between inside a company that owns both the CPU and the GPU, so they can actually design some in-house probably protocol so that the CPU and the GPU can talk to each other. What's more interesting and, and, and more of the frontier, especially uh, for things that we do where we have people assembling IP from a lot of different vendors, is actually seeing that, uh, uh, um, that concept of heterogeneous cache coherency being applied to things from different companies, from different IP vendors, for instance, where you might be able to pick an IP, a CPU IP from one company, a GPU IP from another company, a DSP IP from yet another company, and have all of these be hardware cache coherent. That is something that uh, right now is actually, you know, doesn't exist, hasn't really been attempted. Um, there have been some attempts at developing some uh, uh, general cache coherency protocols, uh, but there is kind of no known instance of this actually being done in the field. And so this is, this is where uh, the, the kind of interesting new developments in cache coherency are, are, are going to be happening. What do we need to get there that we don't have now? Um, one of the big difficulty of cache coherency, which, which may not be uh, obvious uh, unless you've actually worked on one, is that it's extremely complicated. And um, even though the specifications look kind of difficult, but uh, uh, understandable, the reality is, Cache coherency has a lot of 
corner cases built in. You, it's very difficult to actually have a simple mechanism for cache coherency because it's so performance driven. And so there's a lot of cases where, you know, the optimization that the CPUs wants to do things. And so the result is um, um, specifications are actually are very difficult to follow completely and sometimes are even um, not uh, clear enough in every corner case to make sure that if you follow the spec of what you think is following the specification, you will actually be correct. And so the, the big first step issue with, with uh, heterogeneous coherency is actually to both define a specification that will make interoperability possible uh, from just the complexity uh, perspective, uh, and also create all the verification environment that will allow integrators to actually make sure that the various parts that they've uh, purchased and put together uh, actually work uh, properly as, as, uh, uh, as planned. The second uh, difficulty then is performance. Uh, you know, the, the reason why uh, hardware coherency exists is uh, to improve performance, to make sure that the CPU or the GPU or whatever other device that's, uh, that has caches doesn't spend a lot of its cycle idling, pushing stuff out of the cache or invalidating its caches, which is not a good use of time. Um, and and you know, that's where hardware coherency really helps. Um, and, um, uh, sorry, and uh, this is uh, uh, where performance becomes really important and for coherency, there's also a lot of traps that are easy to fall into uh, that, that will make the performance, you know, work really well in one case, work not as well in another case. And this is very, it's, it's, a, it's very hard to predict if you want. Um, even a non-coherent protocol like you know, AXI, you may, you may be able to connect a lot of AXI devices in, in, a, in a way that's functionally correct, uh, but it's very difficult uh, to uh, anticipate some of the corner cases that may happen where the performance may not be exactly what you expect. And so you have to simulate a lot of this. For cache coherency, is an, it's an order of magnitude harder actually. Um, and, um, and, and so performance, once, once it's known to be functionally correct, uh, uh, performance correctness, if you want, is gonna be a, is another thing that needs a lot of attention to make sure that that hardware coherency mechanism that you've put in place that is very hard to get right uh, will actually get you all of the, uh, all of the right benefits uh, on the performance side that you were expecting. To get to the next step though, where we actually are putting a lot more on a uh, complex SOC, we will need this kind of coherency, right? Um, so the, the interesting part is um, there's a lot of uh, belief and certainly a lot of our customers are telling us that this is where they'd like to go. Um, and, um, but the difficulty is, you know, as you said, how to get there. Um, uh, we know that we are going to need um, uh, protocols uh, uh, for uh, interconnecting all of these, uh, all of these uh, IPs from, from different vendors. Uh, we know we're going to need, you know, test suites and ways to do all that integration. And this is really work in progress, uh, really driven by uh, these big integrators. You know, most people doing SOCs these days, they may have some IPs in-house, but a lot of time they're also purchasing a number of IPs externally. So they, you know, they may be trying to connect two IPs of purchase together. They may be uh, trying to connect IPs they own with other IP that, that, that they've purchased. Uh, and so this is where all of the ecosystem is trying to you know, find out how this is all going to happen and, and how this is going to happen in a way that will work and will you know, perform well enough that it's worth the investment. So that, that is where there's a lot of uh, kind of soul searching, if you want, uh, uh, in, in the industry right now. Laurent, thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you for your time, man. Thanks.